Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at localized approaches. Now we've done localized approaches before, but it's just kind of worth taking another quick look at it, especially with some of the quirks that Flight Simulator has uh, recently built up to make things a little more interesting for us. So let's go ahead and get started. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be flying the ILS uh, runway tree tree, but instead of taking the ILS that gives us the left, right, and up and down, we're going to be flying it with just left and right and having to take care of the up and down ourselves. So let's go ahead and make things a little bit more interesting. Uh, right now the visibility is absolutely beautiful. Let's go ahead and make things a little Choo! Ha ho! Hey! Now we've got some problems. Now that's what I call visibility. Delightful. Looks kind of like marshmallow if you ask me. But anyway, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to be flying this as if it was a non-precision approach. Now believe it or not, ILS approaches can be flown non-precision. It's just going to do things like tweak our minimums and everything along those lines. So let's go ahead and take a quick peek at the plate here. Oh, peek at the plate. I like the way that sounds. Pretty good uh, ring to it. So what we're going to do is... Uh, I'm going to pop it up so you can see a little better. There we go. Perfect. So what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and take a look at the initial numbers. Uh, the first thing we need to know is we need to know the ILS frequency, which is going to be 10855. Uh, we're definitely going to want to put that in right away. So I'll we'll actually go ahead and put that in before anything happens here. We're not using any special flight plans or anything like that. 10855, go ahead and swap that over. It's going to go ahead and say IIKX. Let's double check to make sure that IIKX confirmed. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and switch the CDI over to localizer. Notice this is lock and not nav. That means it's working properly for once. Next, what we want to do is we want to make sure that this needle is pointing towards the heading that it tells us. So I'm noticing my approach course here says 328. Oops, sorry. 328, which is going to be this guy right up at the tippy top, which means we need to make sure this thing also gives us a course of 328, which it does. Now, one thing I like to do just for my own sanity is I actually like to set the heading bug like this as well so that we know that it's good to go. Next, what we need to do is we need to be aware of how far off the ground, how far from our positions they are. Now, I'm taking a look here. The Haddock's intersection, which is going to be kind of the initial spot, is 12.2 nautical miles away from the airport. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my PFD, which I'm a DME, and I can see that I'm currently 8.4 nautical miles, which means we are too close. Let's go ahead and back up a little bit. Let's check it now. 9.6, too close. Check it now. 12.4. <sighs> oh, yeah, look, I had extended intersections right to my right. Hey, look at that. Perfect. <laughs> You gotta love that slew button that they can super fun to play with. So next what we need to do is we need to go ahead and uh, figure some things out here. Now remember, we're going to be flying this as if we are going to be um, basically landing this aircraft without having vertical guidance. We're going to do it completely with horizontal guidance. So now in order to do that, it's going to change a couple rules. Uh, the first thing it's going to change is it's going to change what our minimums are. So normally our minimums with an approach onto this runway are 371 feet, but today they're going to go up to 580 feet. Now if we're doing a circling approach, which are super fun, we'd have to actually approach it at 700 feet would be our new minimums, but we're not going to worry about that too much. The next thing we're going to have to watch out for is our initial approach, uh, when we actually kick off the fun, is going to be at 1,800 feet when we cross 6.2 DMA. Then our next position along the flight here is going to be at 1.8. But the most important thing is these numbers right here. We know that if we cross the Homey intersection, which is at 1,800 feet, we need to descend 3.9 plus 0.6 plus 0.5 in order to get ourselves safely down onto the ground. Now, remember, we're not doing vertical guidance. So we need a way to do it ourselves. The good news is there is an easy way to do it ourselves. The trick here is you simply take your airspeed here and you divide by two and put some zeros on it. So, for example, if we were approaching at 120 knots, our airspeed, our vertical speed would be 600 feet per minute. Now, if we we're approaching at 100 knots, obviously 500 feet per minute and so on and so forth. With that known, uh, we know that we can go ahead and approach. Now, keep in mind that rule of thumb is only valid if there is no wind, number one. And number two, it's only valid if the glide slope is three degrees. If we have a greater than that glide slope, that's going to give us all sorts of nastiness when we approach. Keep in mind, if you're an airliner, those numbers tend to get really big, really fast, too. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and uh, grab our heading hold here. I'm going to go ahead and poke it over in this direction just a tiny bit. I'm going to go ahead and select my altitude altimeter. Boop, boop, boop. Heading hold on. It looks pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and unpause. Okay, so the aircraft is going to start swinging over to the right here. Uh, at least I told it to swing to the right. Uh, we're in heading mode. Autopilot is on. There we go. Sweet. So now we're going to start centering ourselves up as we cross over Hadex, and then we're going to start swinging this way. So our initial altitude, as you remember, was 1,800 feet, 6.2 nautical miles away from the end of the runway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pre-select 1,800 feet here. Looks good. 
And I'm going to go ahead and start descending gently to get down to it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that throttle back. Select the VS mode. Remember, we're doing $1.30, so 600 feet per minute would get us down nice and smoothly. However, if you recall, we also came down a little bit higher. So I'm going to use my heading hold to swing us a little bit more to the left here because you can see we're starting to drift. Now remember, the glide slope here is wonderful, but we can't use our glide slope for this particular operation. So we're going to ignore this, or more importantly, we're probably going to use this as a reference as we start coming our way down to the ground here. Now remember, since this is a localizer approach, we're only getting lateral information. They classically call this one a non-precision. This is actually one of the family of non-precision approaches. We'll check out another one next time, which is really sketchy, but it's actually a lot of fun. So now we're doing about 140, which means we need to increase. If we want to hold that three degrees, we need to be coming down at 700 feet per minute. Now keep in mind, my throttle is all the way out right now. So this thing just does not want to slow down. Ah, there it goes. There we go. All right, we'll hold out 120 for now. All right, we're starting to drift a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring my little heading hold function right back to where it needs to go. You can see I'm perfectly lined up right now. I'm uh, just a slightly off glide slope. But again, we can always swing back very, very gently. Again, we're just using heading hold on this one. Air speed's down to 100, which is a pretty bad. So now we need to start thinking. This is where we start getting ourselves in trouble. So we need to be at 1,800 feet when we cro cross the Homey intersection. So now the Homey intersection, like I said, is going to be at 1,800 feet. When we hit that 1,800 feet, we need to be going whatever our approach speed is, number one. And number two, we're going to have to be getting ready to go ahead and get that whatever is pro um, down speed we need. We're going to have to hold that very, very steadily until we get down to our 580 foot minimums. So before I even get to that point, let's go ahead and switch back over to this mode. I'm going to immediately start throttling back to start slowing the aircraft down a little bit. We need to get down to a little bit more reasonable of a speed. I'm going to come down to 90 knots. Swing to my left just a little bit. Now, ideally in the real world, I can actually press the nav button but this will not work. Actually, oh, okay, maybe it will. We'll find out. <laughs> I have my doubts, as they say. So I'm going to pre-arm my altitude, my minimum altitude. Of course, like I said, it's going to be 580 feet. So we'll go down up to 600. All right, as soon as we cross Homey, we're going to have to go ahead and tell this aircraft to descend at 500 feet per minute. So it's actually going to be plus or minus. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to time how long it takes to travel that distance. And then what happens is if we cross the DME of it's going to be 1.8 and we don't see the runway and we're at 840 feet, that means we need to go around or go missed approach. If we go missed approach, of course, we're just going to be zipping over to Barnes Air Force Base. All right, here we go. Here we go to the left a little bit here looks good all right about to cross homey in just a minute so apparently the altitude the localizer mode does not work correctly otherwise this would be a lot less sensitive going about to the right <laughs> i'm so disappointed in the real world this works great all right here we go so we're crossing homey intersection and we're going to be using this to center us and we're going to be keeping our speed as close to 450 feet per minute as possible notice by the way the glide slope is right about to get crossed which means that we've done that correctly as well so in the real world of course we're doing this with dme homey intersection is at 6.2 in the dme so we're going to begin our descent now so we're going to press vse and we're going to go down 500 feet per minute pull the throttle get your first notch of flaps down here we go try to keep yourself right at about 90 knots here Okay, so now we are completely independent of our glide slope measurement. Here's what we're doing. We're descending at about 500 feet per minute. So I'll go ahead and increase a couple throttles. We've got that first notch of flaps in. So all we're trying to do now is keep this needle centered. In the real world, we'd love to keep this centered as well, but we're not going to be able to on account of the fact, like I was mentioning before, that we don't know this information if we're doing this as a pure localized approach. Like I said, in the real world, you can flip this onto navigation hold and it'll hang onto it for you. So here's how this is gonna go. We're now just going to proceed here. We'll watch airspeed, watch airspeed. Get a couple more speeds here. You can see we started dipping below our 500 feet per minute. Go up just a little tiny bit. Looks good. Give it looks pretty good. All right, we're going to come to the right just a tiny bit here. We're starting to drift. All right, this is actually, I believe localizer hold is working, which is awesome because it makes my life easier. Now, according to this glide slope, it says we're perfectly on glide slope right now. That is a complete coincidence. We are not on our ILS approach right now. This is a pure localizer approach. It's just a coincidence that we did such a darn good job as far as calculating all our positioning here. So looking out the window, I don't see anything yet. Uh, we're coming very close to our minimums. Uh, now, the interesting thing here is a 4.3 on the DME. Uh, that would be uh, crossing our next major point is going to be 2.4 on the DME. Now, uh, you can start to see that we're slipping below glide slope. But like I said, as long as we don't cross 840 feet and can't see the ground, we don't have to worry about it too much. 
check in over here you can see I'm, I'm definitely coming a little bleak here but that's okay you can also see we're starting to drift under the glide slope which is okay as long as we don't cross that 580 feet 843 dme is 3.6 as we can see of course with the synthetic vision it makes it really obvious ignore <laughs> slow down just a tiny bit so now we're going to start getting ready for the marker we should be hitting the marker at pretty much any moment now 3.3 nautical miles 2.4 uh oh we're getting very close to minimums starting to get underneath the glide slope but again remember we're doing this completely bilateral we're not doing this by vertical all of our calculations are going to be defining how fast we get down there we wouldn't even know this piece of information notice by the way that this is starting to come back up and recenter itself all right get ready 580 feet go grab manual control here looking out the window and get ready for minimums getting a little slow here And minimums, landing. Next notch of flaps. Go ahead and line our plane up. And you can see that even without the glide slope information, we were able to very, very accurately line ourselves up at the end of the runway and go ahead and affect the landing. Now, localizer approaches are much, much more challenging uh, when you don't have a localizer. Now, what I mean by that is there are approaches called VOR approaches, which we'll take a look a little bit later on, that will force us to actually be able to do all those calculations without any help at all all from that little glide slope diamond and again we cheated a little bit because that glide slope diamond was visible if it were not visible we would have to have done this entire approach without its benefit so again we would have to have just done all our math and basically crossed our fingers there's actually a very substantial crosswind right now which actually probably threw off some of my calculations but i'm not complaining all right and last notch of flaps is in 65 knots is our approach speed on a 172 that's a beautiful runway down there it'd be a shame if somebody put their airplane on it I usually say when you get over the runway, just pull the throttle back. We're going to level off. The plane's going to get really heavy all of a sudden. And we're down. Delightful. All right. Hopefully this video encourages you to try out a localizer approach. Again, it's just an ILS approach without you know, using up and down information. The key trick there is, like I said, if it's a 3%, always assume that whatever your airspeed is, divide by 2 and add two zeros onto it, and that should give you a rough vertical speed. Remember, though, that's ground speed. Not ground speed. Ground speed. So if you are have a very strong headwind, you've got to recalculate. Otherwise, you're going to get there too early or you're going to get there too late. But other than that, enjoy.